This is the Bushnell Tor V5 laser rangefinder that retails in the UK for £369, and this is the AFA laser rangefinder that retails for £100 on Amazon. Now, both of them have six times magnification, both of them have flag lock with a vibrate function, and both of them have slope. Now, if you had to ask me which is the better one, then absolutely the Bushnell wins hands down. This is the better laser rangefinder. However, is it £270 better? Well, I've got them both in hand. We're on the course. It's a glorious day. Let's go find out. It's not bad for the first shot of the day. So why are we doing this video today? Well, at nearly a £300 difference, and probably more than a $300 difference in the US, that's not an insignificant amount of money. That's a massive amount of money, it certainly is to me. So is the difference worth it? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Now, I've reviewed the AFA on its own, and for £100, I thought it was a great rangefinder. If anyone's looking for a budget rangefinder option, here in the UK, that's my pick. However, I really, really wanted to see the difference between the two. So I went out and bought the Bushnell as well, which is currently the leading model. Now this isn't going to be a fully blown review of the Bushnell or the AFA. If you want to check those out, I'll include the links of those down below. But this is going to be a straight comparison between the two. And I'm going to let you know genuinely whether or not I think it's worth the extra money to go for the Bushnell. So here we are. This will be a really good test actually. We're on the second hole here at the Children's Jits course in Worley Park. And from the yellows this is playing at the moment, it says on the board 362 yards. So let's do a side by side between the two right here, right now. Here we go with a bushnell now. I'm going to see if I can lock onto the flag. Okay, so with slope, that's saying that this is 383 yards to the flag. Okay, so that was really quick and easy to actually lock on. Now we've got the AFA here. So the 100 pound AFA, turn it on. And okay, so it's taken a bit longer to lock on. It didn't like it that time. Let's try it again. Still trying, it's giving me some numbers. No, it's still not quite having it yet on this one here. So we're gonna try it one more time. There we go, 389. So you can see there, as a live test, it certainly took me quite a bit longer to lock on with the cheaper one. And actually in terms of distance, what's that? Six yards difference with the slope mode enabled on both. So. Six yards for me as an absolute average golfer, so I'm currently playing off of a 16 handicap, six yards difference isn't a massive amount for me, certainly when we're at such a far distance, when we're at, you know, almost 400 yards. So I think this is a really interesting test to kind of jump straight in with because in terms of the AFA, well on the paperwork, it only says that it does a flag lock up to 280 yards. So we've already proved that it does lock on further than that, but it does take a lot longer. With the Bushnell, you get flag lock up to 400 yards and you can see it worked really, really quickly and really easily there. Is it 270 pounds worth of difference? Not sure. Let's hit a drive. Well, you know what? It's a hook, but it's not terrible. I think he just beat the bunker. Okay, so we're hopping a skip, we've just about made it out of the bunker. And so let's have a look now. So from a second shot here on this hole with the Bushnell, let's use it now. Oh wow, that is fast. That's 165 yards with the slope, normally playing 181, 165 again when I've double checked with it. Now that is really, really quick. Now let's try the AFA. Here we go, right? Three, two, one, go. Yeah, so you can see it's taking longer, but there it is. So. 169 yards, let's try it again. Hang on, I think I got that one wrong. I think that was the tree behind me. There we go. Right, so 157, let's try it again. So it's picking up the tree behind it, 187. Let's try it again. Didn't want to know that time. And 161. So I think that's quite interesting there and I think we're really seeing where some of these differences lie between the two. With a Bushnell, instant almost from this kind of yardage, and it was bang on the money every time, 165, 165, 165. With the AFA, first time it picked up the trees behind, second time it picked up the flag at 169, third time it picked up the trees again, and then the fourth time it picked up the flag again. And it took a little while longer to lock on as well. So, the AFA is doing the job, but not nearly as efficiently and as quickly as the Bushnell. But again, seeing that in real time there, would you say that that was 260 pounds worth of difference for you? So 165 uphill, we're gonna go with a seven iron. Oh, that's not what you wanna see. 
I'm keeping that in, I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm showing you the average golf that I play. I'm here to represent the average golfers like you and me all around the world. So if you are finding this video helpful, make sure you smash that like button. Now, as I said at the beginning, this isn't a full review, so I'll include my links of my reviews down in the description below. However, I think we should just take a moment to go through some of the additional technology that you get with spending that extra money on the Bushnell compared with the cheaper one like the AFA. So first of all, it is just absolutely plain to see that the technology in this is a lot better in terms of locking into the flag. I mean, this is so quick, it's unbelievable. Three times in a row, straight away, 179 yards, really, really quick now. While both of the units do have a vibrate function to let you know that it's locked onto the flag, what the Bushnell gives you is also a visual jolt. So you'll see on the actual outside of the viewfinder, when it locks onto the flag, not only does it give you a little buzz, but it lights up as a red ring as well. Initially, when I got this, I thought I was a bit skeptical, to be entirely honest. Do I really need a visual aid? Is it gonna make that much of a difference? No, it doesn't make a huge, huge amount of difference, but it is a nice additional feature to kind of let you know, yes, it's locked on. Something else that you get on the Bushnell that you don't get on any other rangefinders, I think, actually, is this bite functionality. Now, this is a magnet inside the unit which allows it to clip onto the side of a golf buggy. Now, in here in the UK, we don't really use golf buggies that much, um, so I've got my power caddy, and as you can see here, it doesn't actually clip onto anything, so my power caddy isn't the right type of metal, so, you know, that feature doesn't really mean anything to me because I always use my power caddy. Now, you can clip it on uh, to the clubs if you want. You can see here that it does clip to the side of a club, but personally, I wouldn't want to do that because my clubs are jumping about and I don't really want to damage the unit when I'm spending so much money on it. So, that could be something that is helpful and useful for some people, but personally, I don't seem to be getting much benefit out of it. You do still get the normal little carry case, um, and as you can see here between the AFA and the Bushnell, I think the AFA copied the Bushnell's homework. They look pretty much exactly the same, and they work in exactly the same way. So, 179 yards into the wind slightly. I think that's about six iron. Oh, a little bit off balance, but, oh, that could be very good. Thought you might want to see if I make the birdie putt. Go, go. Oh, it went the other way. Whoops. Oh, that's the way it goes sometimes. In terms of features, there's some similarities here. As I said at the beginning, they've both got slope and they've both got flag lock. And to be honest, they both do the same job. But I'm showing here on this video today that certainly the Bushnell is doing it quicker and more efficiently compared to the AFA. In terms of looks, and well, yeah, they do look pretty similar. So certainly if you decide to buy the AFA, no one's necessarily gonna notice that this is a significantly cheaper rangefinder that you're using. When you do get them in hand though, then again, you do feel a little bit of a difference. The Bushnell has got a bit more weight to it, does definitely feel a little bit more high quality. And there's a few features on there just in terms of, you know, ease of use that again have gone into the Bushnell that aren't necessarily there in the AFA. For example, with the slope mode, you've got a switch on the side, so it's really, really easy to switch slope on and off and it's really easy to show your opponent if you're playing in a competition that the slope functionality is turned off. With the AFA, well you've got what looks to be a switch but it's not. So to turn the slope off of that one you have to hold the mode button for five seconds so there's no way for your opponent to actually know whether or not it's on or off and you could potentially leave it accidentally on from the last time you play around. Also, the buttons are slightly nicer to use on the Bushnell. You've got a big power button there right on the top where your finger would naturally rest. And then to change it from yards to meters, you've just got a simple button on the side. Whereas on the AFAR, the buttons are significantly smaller and quite closer together as well. So again, in terms of ease of use, I've got to say the Bushnell wins that test. But I keep coming back to it, are all these little differences with the Bushnell adding up to a 270 pound difference? Now, one last thing I do just want to test is actually how they perform side by side from around the 100, 120 yard mark. So I'm just walking up to my ball now and we're going to test that in a second. But before we do, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews of golf shoes and tech. Right, so here we go. I think we're about 120 yards. So I've got the Bushnell first of all. So let's have a go now. So that said 120 to the flag playing 124. 117 playing 123, and 116 playing 120. So there we go, three pretty consistent hits there. This is a tricky one, and I've chosen this spot because there are trees quite close behind the flag. So let's see how the AFA gets on, here we go. So that's playing, it says 120, and it's playing 121 and then 119, so there we go. That's all pretty close. So that's really quite interesting. The closer you get, then the closer these perform. So you've seen out on the course, when they were kind of trying to test over there on the second tee, 
340 yards, there was about a nine, 10 yard difference between the two. When we got to about 170 yards, there was about a five or six yard difference. And now that we're at 120 yards, there's about a one yard difference. And also the AFA is locking on quite quick actually. So probably just about as quick as the Bushnell. So the closer you get, the more similar these two perform. And let's see if I can stick one close, Mr. Pitching Wedge. 120 yards, be my friend. Oh, it's pulled it a bit. It's got to clear the bunker. Oh, it did clear the bunker. Oh, that's not going to be too bad. Where's that divot gone? There it is. There we go. I will take that for a birdie opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Rangefinders. Did I really just say that? So you've seen me use these two units side by side here on the course today. And I've also used these units separately for the last couple of weeks as well. So I've used these for quite a few rounds of golf now. And what do I think? Well, I think for hundred pounds, I think the AFA does represent some great value for money. However, we have demonstrated today that clearly the Bushnell is the far superior product. There's just much better technology going on in there. It's a lot easier to use. It's a lot faster to lock in onto the flag and just generally it just feels nicer and is a nicer piece of kit. That being said, 270 pound difference is a lot of money. So I think here's my conclusion. If you would balk at spending an extra 270 pound and you're comfortable with the fact that with the cheaper rangefinder, you're probably gonna get maybe, you know, six to 10 yards difference and it's gonna be a little bit trickier to use the further out you are, then I think it's absolutely fine to go with the AFA or something similar. I think these offer some really, really good value for money and the technology has come along a long way. However, if you are comfortable spending 370 pounds on a rangefinder and you're the type of person that must have the best technology, whether or not that's just something that's in your mind, or if you are a good enough golfer that actually 10 yards difference between the two is really, really gonna make or break your game, then absolutely go for the Bushnell. Now that I've bought it and now that I've got it in hand and now that I've used it out on the course, I can see the benefits of that. However, I still cringe a little bit to think that, you know, there's a 270 pound difference between these two. That's my opinion. Let me know down in the comments what you think. And I really hope you enjoy this video. So make sure you smash that like button if you did. Now let's see if I can make this birdie putt. You know what? I'll be lucky just to get this close. Oh, I didn't hit it hard enough. And there it goes. Wow. Come on then, for par. There we go. Just trying to think of something funny to say at the end of this video. Nope, can't think of a thing. 